Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have a book review of the book Eyes of Silver, a fantasy novel by Michael Stackpole. This is a standalone novel written by one of my favorite authors. Michael Stackpole has written a ton of books uh, that I've loved. He wrote Five of the X-Wing novels for Star Wars, as well as the Star Wars novel I, Jedi, and two of the New Jedi Order novels, uh, uh, Dark Tide Onslaught and Dark Tide Ruin. All of those books I thought were fantastic. I think he's a great author. And then I read his book, Talion Revenant, which I really enjoyed. It is one of uh, my favorite fantasy standalones, uh, and it showed really great promise. And, and when people talk about Michael Stackpole's um, fantasy novels, this, they typically, I see, typically see discussions about Talion Revenant, and then also about his standalone Once a Hero, uh, which I do want to read eventually. But I never, never see discussion of Eyes of Silver. And I happened to see this in the bookstore, and I saw who the author was, and I thought, you know what, I'll pick it up just because of that. I certainly didn't pick it up because of the cover. Woo! We'll talk about that. But uh, I picked it up because of who the author was, and I am so glad that I did because this book is amazing. I am blown away by how amazing this book is. Some people won't like it, probably, but I loved it. One of my favorite books of the year. I, I just read another book uh, a few days ago that was also a favorite book of the year, so I am on a really good hot streak right now. But uh, Eyes of Silver... To, to give some context clues, this book was re uh, released by Bantam Books in the 90s, um, uh, which is where uh, Stackpole was not only writing his Star Wars novels, but he was also writing fantasy novels for them. He would later go on and do a four-book series, The uh, Dragon Crown War with uh, Bantam Books, uh, which would be his big fantasy series that he's known for. But uh, this is one of the standalones that he wrote, and... Um, uh, it, it apparently didn't do amazing in the sales. Uh, it doesn't have many r ratings or reviews on Goodreads. It doesn't have many uh, ratings uh, or reviews on Amazon. And you cannot find, I could not find ebook copies of this. I don't think that there is an ebook of this book. And I could only find mass market paperbacks and old versions of it. So I believe that there's that this is like, if you find it at a used bookstore, that's the only way you could possibly find this book. And I am shocked uh, because it should get more printings and more people should read it and buy it because it's a great book. Um, uh, and I think that what hindered this book's sales was the cover. I think that the cover, which just looks really cheesy, it looks like a cheesy romance mixed with those kind of cheesy posters for, for um, fantasy action movies that you'd see in the 80s and 90s, rather than look like a traditional um, epic fantasy cover. When you compare it to, let's say, Italian Revenant, this one seems more subdued, but this feels like an epic fantasy cover, whereas this, it feels like the cheesy romance or action movie poster cover. Um, and certainly there might be people who enjoy this style, but I don't think that it works particularly well. Um, and I think these books were released like one right after the other. So it's just that I just find that kind of interesting. Um, with Eyes of Silver, uh, this is a political fantasy and also a religious fantasy. Those political themes and religious themes are very prevalent. There is a magic system in this book, but it is very soft and very subdued and not a huge part of the plot. It is it is central to the plot, I will say. Like, it is important, but it isn't big in terms of the scale or the scope or how I just talked about or things like that. And so because of that, for most of this book, it reads more like a historical drama in the way the characters are interacting than it does necessarily as a um, fantasy novel. Kind of like, in some ways, Game of Thrones reads like some like a historical drama set in an alternate world because uh, other than dragons and a little bit of magic, it mostly seems realistic. That's kind of how this is, uh, except this doesn't have the Game of Thrones baggage. Um, and this is a standalone. And so when it comes to the political side of this book, there are uh, four main countries and areas that we're following. You have um, uh, the, the country of Strana, which really resembles Russia. 
uh, in the way that it, it its culture and its people and its names and things like that. Then you have the country of Ilbioria, which is very much like England. And then you have the country of uh, Hellas, Hel- Hellas, Helen Sajar, Sajar, Helen Sajar, which is very much like Israel. And then you have uh, the v- Viorin political district, which is very much like Palestine. So those are the four major countries or empires that you see in this book, and they all interweave. And I've never seen basically England, Russia, Israel, and Palestine mesh together in such a way before. And it works really well here. And um, the basic plot of this book is uh, all of these different countries want to gain more political power. And at the same time, they all are rooted in this original um, uh, religion, which believes that this uh, religious figure, this religious savior named the Dost, will return. And when the Dost returns, he will uh, either unite or destroy the world. Um, And so it's all about the Dost returning, and it's all about um, uh, the characters trying to vie for the political power that they have. So you could see some maybe Wheel of Time influences, you can see some Game of Thrones influences, but this is I, uh, a very different in actual style, uh, the, the word flow and things. This is also kind of a military book and that there's a lot of strategy discussed in it, um, particularly at the beginning and at the end. In the middle, this military strategy mostly uh, goes by the wayside in favor of the religious and political, but military strategy is also very much part of this. And, you know, the religious stuff, Christianity is obviously very integral to the religions of this world, particularly to the Strana and Ilbioria, which are like Russia and England. Um, uh, In fact, there's many times where both you can see Protestantism and Catholicism in the world building. In fact, they they, they like they quote passages of their their scriptures in this book, and the scriptures sound almost word for word. you know, straight from the Christian Bible. Like, you could sell me, uh, uh, out of context, those were Christian, uh, those were Bible verses, and I would totally believe you because they sound perfectly like what the Christian Bible sounds like. And the way that people talk and the way that people uh, have their religious ceremonies. You know, sometimes I read a book and I get frustrated at the way they portray religion because it doesn't seem genuine on the character's part. It feels like it's just, it's part of the culture, so they're just going to happen to be Christian, and they're just going to happen to be Jewish, they're going to happen to be Muslim, but here you can tell it's actually part of the character's uh, uh, worldview and their being, and so I really liked that. And uh, then you also have the religion of the Viorin district and of Helen Sajar, which is like Palestine and Israel, and that religion is very much uh, kind of an amalgamation of Islam and Judaism, which I thought was very fascinating, and so I appreciated that a lot. Uh, the, this book also has some great characters, some fantastic characters. Um, I really liked one of the main characters, Malachi Kid. He's the guy with the, uh, the eyes of silver. He's the, uh, he's, I, you could say he's the main character. Um, I also really liked Natalia um, uh, Ohansky. Hansky, however you pronounce that. Um, uh, she's the woman on the cover. And then I also really liked Robin Drury, who is, I believe he's the knight on the cover. Um, uh, but those three characters in particular, which is ironic that they're the three characters on the cover because I think they're the best characters in the book. Now, there are several other great characters in the book. I just don't have time to go into all of them. But it's very much a political drama, and they're each trying to gain power, and they're each trying to outwit the other people. And so you see that happening on a very fast scale. And this is a standalone book. Don't think that, you know, this is a cliffhanger that he just never got to resolve. No, everything's wrapped up pretty nicely in this book. And I think it's done really well. I mean, theoretically, he could he could have done a, another book in this universe, but he didn't need to. This book wraps everything up perfectly. The maps in this book I love. Uh, I think that they went a little bit too much on them, uh, but they reminded me a little bit of uh, the Rune Lords maps, which also came out around this time, which I really appreciated. Uh, This book also has some great themes. There are some great themes about war, about uh, using political power and whether or not it should, if you have it, it should be used, Um, uh, and how to exert political power and religious. And and at one point, 
Are you believing because you've seen something? And at one point, are you believing because you just have faith and you're just stepping out beyond what you see? Those are some great themes in the book. But the one theme that really resonated with me that I really appreciated was the theme about abstinence and chastity. Um, uh, There are two characters in this book who have an opportunity to do some promiscuous activities outside of marriage. And it is, uh, uh, you know, it is very much, that is very much an option for them. And they decide not to do that. Not because they think they'll look bad for it. Not because they're not interested in the other person. Uh, they're, They're very interested in the other person. But both of these gentlemen refuse to do it because they believe it is morally wrong and they want to have their morals intact more than anything. And I just really appreciated that because that's not always something that you see in fantasy literature. And so because of that, I thought this was a, an excellent, uh, uh, some excellent themes in here. Um, uh, as I said, the, the, uh, the action is is not quite as much as you would expect in a fantasy novel. There's a, there's a little bit of action in the beginning and a lot of action at the end. Um, the middle, the, the, the vast majority of the middle, I'd say about uh, 300 pages worth of the book, is just the political dialogue and the political back and forth and, and the cultural back and forth and the character interpersonal drama. So if you want your fantasy books to have lots of action, maybe this isn't the book for you, but it still should be, well, worth your read because it's just the, the, the political stuff, the religious stuff, the character stuff um, works so well. I haven't had a book blend all of those elements together as well since I read Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. You know, Elantris doesn't have a lot of action, but the political stuff, the religious stuff, and the character interpersonal drama, and also just the fun plot. Uh, I think work well. So I think that this is a good comparison of books is if you liked Elantris, you'll probably like uh, uh, Eyes of Silver. I think that's the best comparison that I could give it. Um, uh, So that is my review of Eyes of Silver. This will go down not only as a great fantasy novel, a great standalone novel, and a great Michael Stackpole novel, but just one of my favorites in general. I believe I even like this better than Italian Revenant, maybe. I may need to reread Italian Revenant because it's been a couple of years um, to make a determination, but I think I like this better. Um, uh, and I wish more people had been exposed to this book. I hope that they can find a way to put it on in, as an ebook or a reprint or something so that people can be able to, to re experience this book because I think it's great. I just think that the cover really did a lot of damage. Although the back cover um, uh, with the ships, I think is pretty cool. Uh, but the front cover, it's not. it does not help the book. So if you have read this book, I'd be shocked to find people who have. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, have you read similar books that sound similar to this? If you have, let me know down in the comments section down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.